The goal of wildlife rehabilitation is to take injured, orphaned, or displaced wild animals, treat them if necessary, and eventually return them to their homes in the wild when they're ready. What do we do then if their homes are no longer big enough to sustain their needs or simply not there at all? As human beings continue to spread across the landscape, habitats are being divided into smaller and smaller pieces, leaving wildlife with less space to move around and find food, water, shelter, and mates. Those remaining pieces are called habitat islands, small segments of habitat which contain only a fraction of the plant and animal species that used to be there. Scientists have found that biodiversity, the number of species of plants and animals in a given area, shrinks as the island itself does. More space, more biodiversity. Less space, less biodiversity. In order to seek space, resources, and mates, wildlife must move. Now, this might not be as difficult for certain species which can fly, like birds or certain insects. However, for those animals that are stuck on the ground, this can be a very difficult and dangerous journey, especially on a landscape that is very divided or developed by humans. That is why scientists, conservationists, and land managers are helping to establish and protect wildlife corridors, small strips of habitat which connect larger pieces of habitat. Think of them like a bridge between habitat islands. In this way, wildlife can express that natural need for movement while having a safe and secure route on which to do it. As time passes, these habitat islands and wildlife corridors will become even more important. As human beings, it is essential for us to continue to find creative and innovative solutions that will allow wildlife to utilize and move about this landscape. It is essential for all species of plants and animals on this planet that we find ways to better share this earth for the protection of all the organisms that share it with us.